Dex Wizard. Yay. Welcome to another episode of Let's Rewatch, the show where we watch movies we loved in our youth and see if they're actually still any good. I'm Nick. I'm Brett. I'm Sam. And I'm Ash. That was my best butler impression. I don't know if it was very good. <laughs> I think you need to up, up it a little bit. Take it again. Take it again. And I'm Ash. A plus. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now we can move do, on. <laughs> do you guys smell that? What's what? that? Oh, Patrick, how'd you get in here? Oh, <laughs> oh through the internet. Wow. <laughs> I don't oh. have to be here. I was invited. <laughs> we we didn't know you were, you were allowed on the show. Uh, apparently, neither did I. You haven't listened to last week's episode, right? I just want to make sure. I mean, no reason, but you haven't listened to it, right? I mean. No, why? Did something happen? Oh, no, 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 no reason. Anyway, Should I go moving listen? on. Didn't we establish that I'm like the only one who actually goes back and listens to the show? Yes. Technically, I do, too. <laughs> you don't well, yeah. count. Yeah. I guess you kind of have to. I wonder if it's something where you've done so many of them where you get to a point where you don't. I, I feel anything I'm a guest on or I do podcast, I have to listen to when it comes out because I just want to hear how terrible I sound one way. <laughs> I'm very self-conscious about it. Glutton for punishment. Well, let, let's do proper introductions because this this could be the first episode that people have heard Patrick. This is Patrick Edwards, the our, our friend from what? We've had him on two episodes uh, you may also know him as I the, don't know. I don't listen to them. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you may also know him as the author of the uh, the sci-fi comedy novel Space Tripping. Welcome back Which again, Patrick. Hey, buddies. <laughs> we, we've we've had you on the show twice before, right? Alien and Ace, Ace Ventura. Ventura. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, right. Oh, what yes. a nightmare we that was. <laughs> we I totally blinked that out of my head. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome back, sir. Yeah, you know what happens when you have Patrick on is three times, right? It's the Patrick hat trick. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the Patrick cubed. Wow. Do you want to uninvite me now, Brett? Do you regret it yet? <laughs> oh, super. Yeah, I was just, like, texting something, at, at, like, minutes before the show, and I was like, hey, want to come on? <laughs> <laughs> Stay up till 1, 1 a.m. and watch Clue with us? Well, it actually is really um, funny that it worked out that way because I was actually supposed to be recording our uh, and playing D&D tonight and recording oh. that. But we had to, uh, not because of someone else, we had to bail at the last minute here. So I had kind of everything set up. So um, if we could find a way in this uh, movie review podcast to use dice, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, this is a movie based on a game. I, I thought yeah. about how we could turn this into some sort of like murder mystery situation. Can I be honest? I've never played Clue. Uh, wow. Do you remember the time it was some party that I had and I remember mentioning that I'd never played Clue and I, I can't, I feel like it was Sam and maybe it was you. I can't remember who else tried to go to Target to buy Clue uh, so that we could play it at the this game. This does sound familiar. And oh, yeah, they didn't that. have Clue. So I still yeah. haven't played it. Wow. I'm, I'm a little mad at my husband here because, whoa. uh, whoa. yeah, mm -hmm. because my Not dad, tired. yeah, my dad got me Doctor Who Clue for Christmas. Whoa. Yeah. And Brett Dr. mistakenly Who? gave it away to Goodwill. <laughs> unopened. You know, that wasn't a mistake. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It was probably Betrayal. It was That's a no man's it's grounds. August. Betrayal. That's pretty harsh. Brett yeah. Like board games? Mm -hmm. Fuck those. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is like Clue. I think it was, it was Clue. Because I remember when I was younger, I, I, I only ever tried to play it like once. And I'm sure there's more of a game to it, but I just remember it's like murder Mad Libs and you just say three things and and if you're right, you win. And if you're not right, you don't win. No, it's process of elimination. Well, yeah, yeah. It sounds like that. that's how you play it, Brett, if you don't have any strategy at all. I was like six, so there was no strategy. Can we make another podcast and call it Murder Mad Libs? Because that sounds pretty great to me. That sounds awesome. So an interesting thing I learned about Clue this year is that 
in the rest of the world, it's called cluedo. Cluedo? Cluedo. The the suffix do, D-O, is, refers to game in, I don't know if it's Latin or something. Oh. But everywhere else in the world, this game is called cluedo. I don't trust the way you pronounce anything, though, so I don't know <laughs> if I believe that. <laughs> Okay. He, he, it's Cluedo, actually. We'll, we'll get Luna to record it and, and just drop the word in. Insert it, yeah. yeah. Is, is that one of those things, like, it needs to be spelled out for everyone else? Like, this is a game. Please do not kill. Well, I think it's more like they came up with a clever name for it. And then when they brought it to America, Americans didn't comprehend what this thing meant. Wait, so is it, to, wait, so yeah, what? Name? I'm yeah, pretty It originated sure. in Britain, I believe. I'm oh, not positive. Okay. Well, but it did start see that. in America. It's got a But in, are you saying it? in Britain it's called Cluedo? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's I mean, that up? is the name of it, the game. Right. And it, the movie I think was generally called Clue except in France they called it Cluedo. Oh, okay. This sounds like you're making it up. Well, no, it really there's, does. there's a parlor and a library. And I mean, I, I don't know. You got Yeah, we don't have those things in America. Fuck parlor. Monopoly's got free parking and railroads. Yeah, I, I totally I never thought of it before, but that makes a lot of sense. All right, I have to look it up now. I guess that's why everyone in the movie has a British accent. Wait, do they? No. Oh. no they totally <laughs> okay. do not. You uh, could have challenged me on that one. Uh, Birmingham, in- Birmingham, England. So yeah, it originated go. in UK and was mm-hmm. renamed when it was brought to America. And then, as as they do with all great board games, they decided to turn it into a movie. Yeah. Because that's the only way to go. You know, I was about to make a joke and saying, I can't wait till they make Mousetrap into a movie. And then I remembered they did. They, they did. did. Oh my that, God, what? That is a movie. Yeah. Did- and, yeah. and Battleship, Brett's favorite movie of yes. all time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when, Mousetrap is pretty good. Is it? It's a Christie story called Mousetrap. Is that? No, it's got. It's actually based on the board game yeah, with the plastic um, pieces that fall to capture a little plastic. Yeah, mouse. I mean, it's like nothing like that, but yeah. uh, let me it's, look it it's up. It's got the guy who plays Timon. Yes. What is his name? Nathan I can't. Lane. Nathan Lane. Yes. Yep. Do you know how many times I've seen Oh, Lion Mouse game? Hunt. It's, <laughs> it's called Mouse movie. Hunt, but it's basically. Oh, Mouse Hunt. Mousetrap the movie. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good. We should watch that with <laughs> Lee Evans too. In fact, good. fuck this movie. It's pretty That's good, nice. you guys. No, I, I oh, remember yeah. Mouse and I, I hated that movie as a kid for one really? reason. Because oh, they trying to kill the mouse. No, they yeah. they gassed the kitten and I was like, That's it, you're dead to me. Nobody kills kittens. This is not Whoa. funny. I don't remember that. You don't remember wow. it? It was no. traumatic for me as a child, and my mom had to, like, talk me off the ledge. They, like, put this adorable, fluffy white kitten in a cage, and then they, like, take it into a gas chamber. And I'm like, Mom, oh my God. And she's like, that's not, don't worry, that's just fake. Like, that's not really how they do it. La, la, la. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, this Aww. movie is wow. dead to me. There's mm-hmm. a lot you know, of you... traumatic stuff in kids' movies, I feel like, especially from 20 years ago, like the 90s. Oh, yeah. 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 Which I've been relearning with having kids and rewatching a lot of <laughs> yeah. them. the classic Disney ones. Like, damn, a lot of parent death. Remember back then when, like, you know, you would have a toy that was a fucking oven? <laughs> like, it, actually, it was a, yes. a light bulb yeah. in a box. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you want a, a great movie based on board games, have I know, Ash, you've seen Game Night. Oh, have yeah. Have the rest of you seen Game Night? No, no, not yet. I saw it. Do you not like oh, it? Oh, what's that tone of voice? I didn't like it. Oof. Ooh, it's so funny. I I thought it was like I thought it was like a really weak story with like really good one liners laid over top. You're just murdering Nick's whole bit here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it back. No, people are allowed their opinions. I thought it was pretty good. And it's it's I don't know. They, there's some subversive stuff that is very easy to miss. I know because I missed it and had to have it explained to me. And I can't even explain it without spoiling it. But it's yeah. just like so brilliant what actually happens in that movie. It's not really one board game. It's like m- Yeah, multiple... it's a movie about people who are passionate about board games mm-hmm. and fall into crazy shit. Yeah. 
And there's like multiple board game references, basically, that I, I didn't get a lot of them either until you told me, I think. Yeah. I'll have to check it but, out. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. But let's talk about Clue, because that is the movie we're supposed to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess making a movie out of a board game is kind of like the worst idea possible. <laughs> but fact. I think I, I I don't want to get I, I guess we we're getting and into I hate expectations. Clue podcast <laughs> over. I love and Just this kidding. movie is fantastic. It's it somehow succeeds despite the fact that it's kind of a ill conceived concept. I think. I feel like out of all the board games, this one makes the most sense to make a movie out of yeah, because there's, there's an story. actual plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> have Have we all seen this movie? Oh yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, actually, it's funny. Is um, I, I saw it a lot as a kid, and I was yeah. laughing when um, Brett had uh, messaged me. So it's a, it's the per, for me for your for the let's rewatch format. It's perfect because it's something I watched easily ten plus times as a kid, and then now haven't yeah. seen for maybe a decade plus. So perfect. Kinda, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't remember how I watched it. I don't remember ever owning it. I think it was on Comedy Central a lot mm-hmm. for a while yeah, it was on TV. Yeah. A lot. But um, the how you watch this movie, I think, is probably the most interesting movie, most interesting element about this movie. And we've talked a little bit about movies where the movie theater experience is so unique and cannot possibly be reproduced on video or on TV. Like when we talked about Galaxy Quest, how they actually change the aspect ratio of the movie in the theater during the movie. Do you guys know, I think Ash and I were talking about it, but the rest of you, do you know the crazy thing that happened in the movie theater with this movie? I think you told the, yeah, we've, me. Yeah, we've chatted about it before, I think. Well, so if I'm correct, I know I only watched it. The only format I ever watched it in was with all of the endings. Strung, every time I watched it, had all of them strung together. But I thought I heard, and maybe it was from listening to the podcast, and you had mentioned it, Nick, that they did a different ending in different markets. Yeah. So depending on which movie theater you walked into you would see a different ending mm-hmm. and you could like talk to your friends later and have seen different endings and think each other are completely insane. Do you think that was a but purely uh, a business decision? And then they were hoping that it would become the thing where people would go see it like three and four times and they'd triple or quadruple their revenue. Cause they'd have to, they wanted to see the ending I don't know. Know. cynical I about it. I bet it's a creative thing because it's mm-hmm. it's an awesome idea and it really ties to what the game is all about that the the money people probably thought, hey, that'll make us money, too. Yeah, because, you know, the game can have it's always the same story, but the game can have different endings. Right. Yeah. Every Everything. time you play the game, it's got a different ending. Yeah. Like, how, it's brilliant how they capture the whole point of the game by doing that Mm -hmm. because i the way i saw it was um i think i did see it on tv a few times but my parents had the dvd and on the dvd you can select to do the random endings so every time you watch it you could get a different ending which was always fun because you just don't know what ending you're gonna get you know and it's kind of an awesome thing about you know just so happened that dvds had this feature where they could on the fly swap scenes and so, yeah, we, we've got the DVD here and I guess we have to discuss like, and if you're getting it off of streaming services and stuff, you're getting it with all three endings pasted together at the end, which is I how I assume you guys are planning to watch it. We have it burned. Uh, I ripped it. Sorry, there's mystery music in our house. <laughs> Haunted house. I need to go. I need to go find this and stop it. Go down to the basement. Yeah. You'll float. <laughs> you all float down there. And that was the last we ever saw of Brett. <laughs> yep. He didn't hear that, but that was creepy. I didn't think we had a creepy basement. And then our movers came in and moved some stuff into our basement. And they were like, oh, I don't want to be alone down here. And ever since then, <laughs> now I'm like, damn it, we have a murder basement. Great. <laughs> Why'd you have to say that, mover? As Just someone who has it. been in your basement, you really do. <laughs> I don't think it's that creepy. I guess having gone to Michigan a lot, there's a lot creepier basements out there. Yeah, Sam's right. g- grandma's basement is like the fucking nightmare basement. So, mm-hmm. all right, is it bare concrete floor? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a bare 
just a light bulb hanging from a, a line from the ceiling? There is. Yes. There are two of those. Yeah. Only two. Uh, we okay. should probably remove the meat hooks. <laughs> oh, um, unpainted wooden <laughs> beams. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, we okay. have that. You have a fucking creepy basement, you guys. <laughs> so Clue came out in 1985, directed by Jonathan Lynn, who I thought had done more stuff, but um, we know him from My Cousin Vinny and The Whole Nine Yards and Distinguished Gentleman. So he's done some stuff, but... I guess, and this is common with this movie, there's a lot of people who I think are bigger than they are just because of how big this movie is in my mind. Um, but it was co-written by our old friend John Landis. Oh, so we're going back to Landis Town a little bit here. That, that explains, explains a lot. how crazy it is. Yeah. Yes. And I, we've we've been hanging out with John Landis a lot. We saw American Werewolf in London, Coming to America... Did we do Blues Brothers? I feel like we did Blues we Brothers. We haven't. No. We really need to. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess I've just watched it recently. You got to stop. <laughs> stop. I'm allowed to watch Blues movies. <laughs> I feel like we didn't do it last time because you I just watched it. I haven't recently. watched Mean Girls in four fucking years, guys. Oh. Four years. But we're well, going to watch it up. soon, right? Oh, yeah. October is coming up. Yeah. We'll do it. Okay. Okay. October 4th. So I guess Tim Curry is our lead here. If there if there is a lead, it's got to be Tim Curry. Absolutely. But we've also seen a lot. We saw him in It and in Legend. And Legend came out the same year as this. What? Really? really? Yeah. No really. way. Is that, that why they couldn't have him in most of the film? Because he was doing this one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember Legend. That's how much I disliked it. It's not great. I think I watched it within the last three or four years. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was real bad. It's rough. But I in, in my yes. head, my my internal IMDb for this is that it stars Tim Curry and then a bunch of extras. Michael McKean is no extra. No, there yeah, there's some great great actors in this. Michael McKean is a fantastic. He's one of Christopher Guest's regulars. So you know him from This is Final Tap, A Mighty Wind, and he's on Better Call Saul and he's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Michael McKean oh. is awesome. Uh who else, Patrick? Who else do we have? Um, I always forget her name, but she's in all of the um, or the classic Mel Brooks movies. Oh, oh the yeah. the You're flames. Of Madeline Kahn. Yeah, yeah, yes. Who was in Blazing yeah. Saddles and Young Frankenstein? She's all so over good the in side this. of my face. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got another big player here. I feel like I don't know the, the. I feel like I've seen the General Mustard guy and stuff before. Yeah. So that's Martin Mull. And it's crazy. I'm thinking, yeah, Martin Mull, he's awesome. Everybody knows Martin Mull. And then I'm looking at him on IMDb and I'm like, I don't really recognize any of this stuff. Mm. And I think maybe I just know and love him from this. And he has been in a lot of TV. Like he was a semi-regular on Roseanne and he's been in a bunch of stuff I've seen. But I can't tell you Martin Mull's awesome because blank. Mm. Unless that blank is Clue. Have you ever (sighs) had that experience where like... You hear about a celebrity and you're like, Aria Grande, who the fuck is that? And then you find out that they're like huge and you've just never heard of YouTube them. YouTube streamers. Well, Reddit. <laughs> I love that that's your example. but <laughs> Reddit is melting down because of one of the main actors from Lazy Town just, just oh, passed. Yeah. I don't know what the hell Lazy Town is. I don't know who this guy is. But people love this guy. Yeah, Nick, I, I have no idea what that thing is. But it, yes, yeah. you are absolutely. That's a perfect way of describing it's, it. That's it's kind of a horrifying kid down. show, is what it is. Yeah. The be- the only thing I know about Lazy Town, I've never seen the actual show. It's but... from like Finland or Iceland. Sure. It's very gifable. Yes. It's like a kid so show. the best is look up the Lazy Town Little John mashup because that's how I know. Oh of boy. Lazy Town, and okay. it's fantastic. But you guys are going to kick yourselves when you remember that you forgot about Christopher Lloyd in oh, this movie. What? I did. And then there's another. Uh, it's not. It's Miss Scarlet. She's not. It's not Susan Sarandon, but she kind of looks like Susan Sarandon. Yeah, Leslie Ann Warren, okay. which is another one of those. Where I was like, yeah, Leslie Ann Warren's in this, and I'm like, yeah, I think I only know her from Clue. Also, Eileen Brennan, which I'm pretty sure I would only know from this, but she was in The Sting, so mm-hmm. she's like. But she's great in this, too. But yeah, Christopher Lloyd, this would have been the same years Back to the Future as well. Oh. And we saw him in Roger Rabbit. I don't we saw know him why, in but Adam's I had Family. Christopher Plummer in my head. 
<laughs> oh, interesting. Chris I was really Plummer. confused there for a second. There was that nobody problematic be... in this movie they had to replace. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah, awesome cast. I would not classify them as extras. I would classify them as a bunch of amazing comedic actors. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally jazzed about that. So let's talk about expectations. I have seen this very recently. Um, it was interesting because talking to Luna, who is from Italy, she knew about the game, but not about the movie. So, of course, oh. I had to show her this movie. So I've seen it, I think, within the past year. And for me, it's it's still as solid as it ever was. Uh, so, Ash, what are you expecting? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't I think the last time I saw it was in college. But I know I saw it a bunch as a kid. And I liked it then, and I liked it when I saw it again in college. And I mean, it has it has my main man, Tim Curry. <laughs> so I, I think I will definitely like it. I don't remember a lot of details. Okay. I just remember a lot of people standing in a house talking. <laughs> and, and brilliant lines. Like you yeah. were throwing out flames, mm -hmm. flames on the side of my face. But I only remembered that because I saw a gif of it recently. Oh. Otherwise, I wouldn't have remembered that line. Yeah, I remember it because a girl in one of my animation classes used it as a line of dialogue. And <laughs> it like, stole it. No, Well, I mean, it's a common thing it's when homage. you when you animate. Yeah. You take a line of dialogue and then you animate a character to it. Oh, okay. like a Got 2D it. character. And so it was really funny the first time. But we had to review oh, no. it every class on loop for like a solid minute. And so it's just like burned into my head. And I haven't listened to the clip since. So I'm hoping it's been enough time. But so yeah. I'm going to say something since we're talking about that quote. Ash, if we do watch Random Ending Setting, mm -hmm. I think that line is in one of the endings. Oh. And we could miss out on that. I'm wondering if I've seen all of them too. Yeah, yeah. The rest of well, us are watching the the string the, together, all three endings. endings. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got Brett's version. So, uh, Sam, what are you expecting then? Uh, first time I saw this was in college, <clears throat> and I don't know if I've seen it since. So it's are you been just repeating what Ash said. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, did we see it together? No, Maybe. I saw it with Brett. I bought it at Target for like five bucks. And I don't think That's I've seen it. five bucks ever. Yeah, seriously. Um, it's an awesome movie and I expect to fully enjoy it. I don't remember a ton of the plot. Uh, I just remember them running around the house a lot, like back and forth. Oh, so, yeah. Almost sort of Scooby-Doo like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I fully expect to enjoy this. I think it's definitely going to hold up. And Tim Curry, how could this go wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have said that before, haven't we? Yeah. That is true. <laughs> uh, to be fair. We, we know how that can go wrong, you guys. <laughs> to be There's fair. To that question. The only parts of that movie that sucked were the parts without Tim Curry. That's true. This is true. So. So answer to the question. How can it possibly go wrong? Put him in a, a small percentage of the movie. Yeah. Okay. That's how it could go wrong. Fair. Yeah. All right, Brett. What are you What are you looking for? Well, well, I don't want to set up like negative expectations because I know it's nice. going to be cool. But I think that this movie has a uh, uh, an exponential growth of excitement. What does that uh, mean? Uh, that's that's how I remember it. Is it starts off? Thank you, Sam. And stays slow <laughs> for a while. Uh, and then and then just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. And and I think all, where it ends up makes the part that was slow worth it. That's what my kid brain remembers is there was a there was a slow segment. There uh, is a very long like introduction of the characters, which I think is what you're thinking of. Yeah. But I, what I'm hoping is that as an adult, you'll find that those character introductions are worth it. Yeah, because writing and nuance did not entertain young Brett. No. Okay. But some really subtle comedic actors doing amazing work might make it worth it from an adult perspective. But I, yeah, I'm I'm almost positive this is going to end up like a, a, an enjoyable thing. 
but I wonder I wonder if it'll be slow at the beginning or if I if I just completely missed everything good about this movie as a kid. <laughs> All right, so Patrick, what what do you expect? And when did you last see it? Uh, it's got to be the better part of a decade. I don't think I think it was nice. before college. So, I, and I I'm expecting to like it. I still remember it very well, but I'm also expecting to pick up a couple things that um, dumb child Patrick did not <laughs> pick up. <laughs> Uh, I think it took me like it was like the fourth or fifth time I watched it as a kid before I realized th- what era it was supposed to be set in. Oh yeah. So, oh, I just remember thinking, oh, they look they they dress interesting. They're weird. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> it, really. It's just the eighties in my head, so that's yeah. It's not nineteen ninety one or something. Um, that's funny because it's like the forties, isn't it? Or the yeah, yeah. I think it's it's the fifties. Um, I don't want to say stuff that is in the movie but yeah i think it's the 50s there this is kind of fun for me because i know very well that haze of eh, i haven't seen it in a while i think i kind of know what's up which all of you have with this particular movie and i've seen it recently so i don't know so fuck uh, you guys no i'm like <laughs> i think you're, all you're gonna like it to me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think you're gonna like it i don't know there could be some fights but we'll see. I'm curious now. I, I'm I'm just curious. I feel like I have the memory of there being. Is there the potential of there being a racist character, or am I m- remembering wrong? Because I feel like nothing are, terribly overt. Are you okay. thinking of Breakfast at Tiffany? No, that's a pretty but, different movie. <laughs> well, there is a very yeah. There's yeah. You are very right about that one. <laughs> uh. Uh, but no, I just, I couldn't remember if that happens in this movie. Mm. Not, not racism. I think there's a lot of like implied homophobia. Well, Mm. I don't think it's implied. I feel like yes, but also I feel like for the time I will talk about it after. Okay. (laughs) Well, no, because I feel like, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, Patrick. Like, yes, homophobia is a topic that, that we can talk about. But the way that they do it. Yeah. I think it's I think it's and, great and but leads into one of my not all-time that favorite a, lines that, in any movie let me, ever. Let me preface. Not that there's a good way to ever present homophobia. Not that there's ever a positive way to do that. But I'm saying it, it's not as cut and dry as that. Yeah. I'm gonna say something risky here. I think this movie does have the best possible way to present homophobia. Oh boy. I all think right. it works and it's awesome. We shall <laughs> we shall see how it goes. On record, Nick loves yeah. homophobia. <laughs> I love oh, how God. homophobia is handled in this movie. I also yeah. love a particular song that pops up a lot in this movie. Oh, really? You going to make some music predictions? Yes. Ooh. There is one song. I can't remember if they play different versions of the same song or if just the same song plays a lot, but it's an awesome song. Mm. And it is this movie for me. Okay. okay. Yes. You were, you were mentioning not- something about your favorite line, too. Oh yeah, I think uh, it's funny we're we're doing this. Some of us are talking across across Skype. Sometimes the crosstalk gets a little confusing. But but I was saying uh, the homophobia leads into one of the best lines, in my opinion, in all movies. It is a good line. Uh, Brett remembers it. <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. of yeah. I think I know. All right. Wow, cool. I don't remember shit about this movie, apparently. <laughs> so you might want to watch it. And those of you who are listening who have not seen it recently, you might want to pause the podcast, watch the movie. Because when we get back on the mic, we're going to talk about what we thought of Clue. Life could be a dream. Life could be a dream. Do you guys know the song? No. Yeah. Life could be a dream. Shaboom. Am I the only one? So weak. So weak. <laughs> that's so awkward. That's the only <laughs> line I know of that song. <laughs> the, acapella, the acapella guy. The doom, 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 doom. Oh, what about the... The for she's a jolly good fan. Oh, I, I love uh, Madeline Kahn like harmonizing. Yes, so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we should start by addressing the elephant in the room. Stop saying bad things about Patrick. My God. <gasps> <laughs> I've been slacking on my cardio. Yes. But there's no need to go throwing names around like that. I mean, you guys were clearly bothered by how much this stole from Alien. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right? Yes. You've got your small group of people contained in a, a small area, slowly being hunted down and killed one by one. And that time that thing burst out of Martin Mull's chest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh-huh. And With acid melted that one person's skin and mm-hmm. everything. It was dandy. But there's a reason for that. Because according to the author of the screenwriting book, Save the Cat, these are the same genre film. Okay. He categorizes Wait. them as monster in the house. Uh, okay. Is that ah. the cat? That's what? the cat of Save the Cat? Is the alien cat? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe this, I don't want to dis- I don't want to discredit your comment because it's it's valid. Uh, but I I always feel like I need to point out that this the save the cat guy wrote blank check. I know. Really? <laughs> hey, another Tom Loke movie. I do want to watch it, but I don't think it'll be good. <laughs> it's no. Yeah. Uh, I did have a Tom Loke movie marathon a couple of years ago with my sister because we both like it's movies a good like that. So this is Blank Check, Ace Ventura. No, we didn't watch Ace Ventura, and uh, but Surf Ninjas, which I think you should should do. Mm. That, Wait, Surf Nin- is that is that in the Three Ninjas franchise? Or is this no, different? that's its own beautiful standalone masterpiece. Its own ninja movie. Oh boy, <laughs> huh? Quantum so dudes? a guy that wrote a book that film students commonly read wrote those movies. Well, n- n- no, he he that was he, he wrote oh, okay. the Blank Check film. He he wrote. Multiple, multiple. I mean, he had a very successful screenwriting career. It's just that the only film that he ever wrote that became a movie was Blank Check. I think there was another one as well. I can't remember. Wait, so then how did he have a successful (laughs) writing career? (laughs) Because the thing that you don't realize is that most screenwriters make a living writing screenplays and they sell, they option the screenplay to a studio and the studio then has a couple years to make it. But the thing is, is that studios buy more options than movies they make. So you can be a success. In fact, most screenwriters have written multitudes of screenplays that they've sold that just never became a film. The guy who just did the film, um, uh, the spy who dumped me, Talked yeah. about this on Twitter as well. He's been a screenplay writer for years. Like, he, that's been his career. But this is just the first film he's ever written that actually got made into a film. So, gotcha. Speaking of which, so, so Blank Check was his most marketable idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wish, I wish I publishing guess. worked like that. I wish I could get paid just for writing books, whether they get published or not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't want to write a book that nobody reads. True. Uh, I don't know. Most I mean, people I, who well, write textbooks Nick, do that. So, how much Ooh. am I getting paid for this book that nobody will read? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, screenwriters get paid like lots of freaking money if they sell a script, even if it doesn't get made into a film. Patrick's yeah. over there being like, "Yes, more. Tell me more." <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Patrick, uh-huh. Patrick and I are working on a script right now. Yeah, so. it's my first foray into writing something that is it, have to get. That's a different. Yeah, you to, might you might be lucky, and that one might be made, Patrick. Yeah, we'll <laughs> it is a different animal writing something that is not just going to be read as you wrote it, as in you're writing something that's then going to get mm-hmm. put, you know, has to be filmable. So yeah, yeah that's it's definitely a different different kind of challenge. Definitely, because I can think up anything I want, but the fact is, it's still got to be able to be put on the screen. Actually, yeah. <laughs> So what'd you think of Clue? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wrote no less than three times in my notes that Tim Curry is a treasure. <laughs> a national treasure. Yes. I mean, he does work for the government, so. There was so Only much in that good. one ending. There, there was so much good in this movie. Uh, but at the end, I still kind of felt like in in a small way that thing i said about tim curry and a bunch of extras is relevant like everyone did a great job and then tim curry did a greater job <laughs> well he always does sure he was pretty yeah. great but there was so much great happening here i i have never laughed out loud so many times mm. during a let's rewatch movie nice <laughs> as i have during clue yeah, I'm just I'm giggling the whole time. Like starting with the just this l- very subtle, tiny little gag of 
everybody checking their shoes because they smelled the dog shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. Joke. God, it's such a glorious, tiny little subtle joke. Yeah, that was pretty good. But, I love Miss Peacock looking at the the um what's her name? The like a vet? A vet, like looking at Yvette's boobs. I and, love like... everybody staring down a vet. <laughs> yeah. That's another running gag that's just brilliant. Like she's serving food and people are staring at her chest and it, and it's <laughs> and it sounds dirty as hell, and it is dirty as hell, but these actors just brought out so much comedy with their tiny little glances. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, so good. it was all super subtle and like super dry, but so hilarious. I, I like, love like the word, the subtle, the wordplay, the dry word is mm-hmm. even as simple as uh-huh. right off the bat was we just, I buttle. What's a butler do? Wait. I buttle. Yeah. <laughs> I, buttle. Um, <laughs> I like when the this. guy walks out of the bathroom, like wiping his hands, like he just used it after yeah. Tim Curry yeah. threw him in there. Uh, uh, so, so your work hasn't changed then. Okay. Yeah, I wrote that one down too. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorites has always been when they first arrive at the house and they're sitting in the car and she says, why is the car stopped? And he says, it's frightened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, so good. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I read that the the flames on the side of her face thing was all ad-libbed by that actress. Yeah. It, awesome. I believe mm. it. Mm-hmm. It was really funny, and like you just you felt the frustration. Like mm-hmm. you can't say the words. <laughs> there's actually a lot. I was looking it up. I was curious. I'm not a big trivia buff, but there's a lot of interesting trivia with this movie mm-hmm. that I was checking out. Did too, you that, see the fact about Carrie Fisher? That was yes. That yeah, Carrie Fisher was not only yeah cast as Miss Scarlet, but then she went into rehab. Whoa. Hmm. Oh, yeah. like four Aww. days before they started shooting, so mm-hmm. that other actress was a last minute fill in. The the Susan Sarandon look alike. Mm-hmm. See, okay, I'm not. I wasn't crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, she looks yeah. a lot like Susan Sarandon. And then uh, they did make a fourth ending that did not ever see the light of day. Apparently, I saw oh. that. Yeah, it was like where Tim Curry's characters is he poisons them all and tries to get away or something, and he's the oh. bad guy and dark. It occurred yeah. to me watching it this time that it really doesn't matter. Like what 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 like if I asked you like, okay, so what happened? Like who was the killer and why really doesn't matter. It's just okay, we get to see them running around and throwing out gags for another couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's really the benefit of it. Mm-hmm. I I would totally believe though, like I remember even as a kid watching it, I'm like, oh, Tim Curry's totally the killer. Like, he totally killed everyone. It makes well, the most sense. Before or after sense. you've seen it. <laughs> and it's just, like, stuck in your head. Well, I hadn't seen it. Yet. So you saw this first before seeing Clue. Or you saw Clue before seeing it. Yeah, I watched and it for the first like time with you. <laughs> Well, it's like in a room full of normal people, like the one talking like this is like, yeah. oh, I was a little more Matt Berry than Tim Curry, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, the one like, <laughs> he's the one that like explains everything and knows and set everything up. He told everyone to come in the beginning. He's even like talking to a vet and the cook and he's like, are you ready? Like, is everything prepared? You know? Like, uh, it just yeah. makes logical sense for him to be the actual killer and that he's just fucking with these people the whole time. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an ending where a vet and the cook aren't actually dead. Like, they've all been in on the joke and it's just, like, hazing these people. Yeah. And he's got the accent, you know, well, the British true. accent yeah. equals villain. And there's that, that thing that's always stuck in your head, and I have no idea where it came from, but the butler did it. Mm-hmm. I don't know oh, if that's yeah. an Agatha Christie Did it come from or... this? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Is or... there a butler in the game? No. No. Interesting. No, I think There's the not... only people in the game are Mr. Body and the Core Six. Is Mr. Body? Oh, is he, he's the one who's dead in the game, right? That's right. the murder you're trying to solve? Yeah. Get it? Because he's a makes... body. That's his on-the-nose name. Yeah, it makes yeah. more sense in a board game. Like, hey, kids, who killed Mr. Body? Yeah. So, you know, the uh, the layout of the house, the main floor, is exactly what the board game was. And even the uh... secret passageways, that when they say in the movie that it came from the conservatory to the study or whatever, those are the passageways that connect oh, in I the love board game. Oh, wow. That it, makes it, sense. Because I was... did a 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Mine's changing <laughs> subject, so go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, because I looked up, I was also looking up trivia about the film because I was curious, like, did they shoot in a real house? Because it looks so real. And apparently it's all a set except for the ballroom, which was shot in a mansion in Pasadena. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our old stomping grounds. I was super impressed with how well they integrated the elements from the game without it feeling too, like, heavy-handed or scripted. Oh, my God. We have to explain game night to her with everyone else (laughs) off because it's the same thing. But but I like what you're saying, Sam, because it's always seemed pretty ridiculous in the game that, okay, you have to figure out who killed the person with what weapon and where. How can you not know where the murder happened? <laughs> That's uh, ridiculous. Yeah. the body. But they worked that into the movie, and, and really, yeah. that really worked really well. Yeah. It, it was really fun. And I liked the really, like, quirky setup of, like, calling all these strangers together and, like, the way they unveiled that they all knew each other and, like, mm-hmm. how it was, like, you could always tell there was something else going on, but you didn't know what. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the only, like, from the board game element that seemed a little ham-fisted was actually the introduction of the weapons. Like, you're in a house oh, full yeah. of stuff. Like, there's two candlesticks on the mantle behind you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if a candlestick and a pipe wrench are lethal weapons, then anything in this room can be a lethal weapon. <laughs> Including Mel know- Gibson, who's standing in the corner. <laughs> like, how hard would you have to hit somebody on the head with a candlestick in order to kill them? I guess it depends on what it was made from. That's yeah. true. I mean, yeah, probably not like probably not that hard. I feel like people are just squishy. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, Luna and I did this. Uh, l- yeah, we tried hitting each other with yeah, candles. No, yeah. <laughs> no, we did this. Uh, Where's Luna, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen her in months. <laughs> we did this uh, live murder mystery dinner thing for New Year's, and it was terrible. The location was great, but. We're, we're both kind of obsessed with this idea and want to plan one of these nights. Like, well, plan that go game. To the, murder? The, the one that Justin <laughs> McRoy talked about. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> yeah, we want to plan a murder. It was like, did Nick just... <laughs> no, no yeah. like, plan a murder mystery weekend and have people show up and then, like, have to figure out... I've invited you all here to kill one of you. That would be so much fun, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, there's All that right. one that, like, Justin McRoy and Travis McRoy went to that was... It's, like, in Ohio, I think. Castle something. Somewhere. I have it bookmarked. But it yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I looked it up, and it's like, I would love to do that, but it's in a place that I will never be. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they do different theme nights based on different stories and stuff like that. There needs to be an es- a clue-themed escape room. Well, I think oh, every yes. escape room that does not have like a pirate theme or something is basically Clue. It's always yeah. like Elizabethan mansion style, but unless it's I think got what theme. I think what Ash is wanting is like somebody in the escape room to be the murderer Moida. and like yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's that's what I'm talking about. I want to plan like this murder mystery night and people have to figure it out i just want to be locked in a room with tim curry i mean (laughs) i thought you were gonna say my name at first and i was gonna feel really honored oh well you could be there too if you want (laughs) i'm gonna edit the word mystery out of all of nick's comments here so he says he's gonna plan a murder night we We did this murder for new years and it just it wasn't good (laughs) It's just like, you know, we tried to hit him in the head with a candlestick, but funny thing is, is it doesn't actually kill someone. <laughs> I feel like it would take a few, a few bashes. Like none of those people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just That's, saying. This just takes a real dark turn. This, this podcast. <laughs> let's let's even break lift. down the physiology. How many bashes of... does it take to get yeah. to the center of a human pop? Yeah. <laughs> None of those people looked like their skull had any damage. That's all I'm saying. Are, are you hitting them with like the edge of the base? Like you're swinging it like a hammer, or are you doing kind of like a like like blunt force trauma? Yeah. 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 yeah, like, like a stamp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's different ways, you mm-hmm. know. 
It's like in movies when they like go to kill someone by like squeezing their eyeballs in or whatever with their thumbs, you know, like Which, that doesn't kill someone. That's what I was always They're wondering. Does that actually alive. kill somebody or just, I mean, it no. fucks their eyes up, right? But like, does it actually it's kill unpleasant. them? It's unpleasant. I don't I think, think it's so. like, I, I, I want to say it's like a brain pressure thing. Maybe. Is that like the palm to the bridge of the nose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> but that's that not logic. real either, isn't it? I don't know. What I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, your nose is cartilage. It does it actually. It doesn't seem like it would. Welcome shoot anything to into your brain. how to kill a human with your bare yeah. hands. Welcome Can to you kill, kill like that? Her latest, uh-huh. her new podcast, Kill Zone. Wow. Have you done any of this research for your new book? <laughs> yeah, you know my my silly slapstick look about aliens who get drunk and use curse words. Yeah, it gets real nasty. I get yeah, I just. Come out of nowhere. <laughs> There's an intergalactic serial killer and yeah, all that stuff. I mean, no. that'd be a pretty good gag. Like, ah, I hit him in the nose. Why didn't he die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's just like screaming on the ground. God, why? So you say Love that, it. but you know, authors do have to do that homework sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I'm on a list somewhere. <laughs> yeah. There should be like a. I think I, I don't want to take credit. I think I saw this on Twitter or Reddit somewhere a while, like a year or so ago. But someone was like, there should be an I'm a writer filter on Google. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> so if you're looking up like how to kill a human or something, um, yeah, you don't you don't end up on a list. But I've definitely yeah, had some Google searches. I'm like, that's that'd be weird. If someone See, saw that. And, and I take it a step <laughs> further and I have a weird Amazon purchase history with uh, all the huh? weird props really? and weapons I buy for videos. The worst one is uh, if you follow the guy who does uh, toothpaste for dinner, he has another thing he updates all the time that's called the worst things for sale. And oh, no. he just posts a link to the worst things for sale on Amazon. And if you click through and like read them, that's your search history on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and Amazon makes all kinds of terrifying recommendations to me now. So yeah. that guy is just straight up trolling everyone. Oh, really. absolutely. But then I feel like you write this story and you're basically teaching people how to kill or how to hide bodies. Like, I know exactly how to get rid of a body having watched Dexter because it seems pretty ironclad. Breaking Bad. <laughs> you know, Me too. What? Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> isn't that like kind of a bad thing for these writers to be doing? There was, oh, there was something where some movie or show where the writers got a call. Oh, my God, I'm blanking on it from the FBI because it was there was like, some, some kind of this? crime. Yes, exactly. It was like, that's way too accurate. How did you know uh-huh. this? I mean, there's a oh, TV show called How nuts. to Get Away with Murder. I mean, I imagine it's it's one of those things where if if there was only one way to get away with murder, then, like, it would be terrible to tell people. But apparently, there's a lot of ways. Because <laughs> how many seasons? First one, be a white male. <laughs> Check. Oh. oh, God. Oh, yeah. no. What else, Sam? What else? I got, my, I got, my, I got multiple lists going here. Have, have enough <laughs> money to get a really good lawyer, and that's about it. <laughs> That's your checklist. Yeah. That's how you get away with murder. What if that was just the show? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole show. She she, com- she comes up looking all badass, and she says, <laughs> "Are you gonna try to do it?" <laughs> no, I, nope, nope. Stop stop I would it. love to see this. I, no. I kind of want to see it too. Okay. I stopped that train wreck before. It <laughs> Patrick Edwards, master of improv. <laughs> <laughs> So was I right that this was probably the best use of homophobia? Well, I was going to say yes in the sense of, the, yeah, but they it was accurate and that there was a problem at that time. And then right. I like that he was just, he's like, yeah, I don't have any shame, but pragmatically it's yeah. a problem. Um, and how funny all of their reactions to him were. Like they were all gross and creepy, but they were gross and creepy anyway. Well, it wasn't but the it was just like, funny. yeah, go. I feel like Miss Scarlet was just, yeah, man, yeah. go, you yeah. do you. <laughs> Which yeah, makes maybe sense. I missed that because I didn't see anyone really react to it. And I I didn't get the vibe that anyone was homophobic uh, in the film. Yeah, Except I think for, you missed uh, it because when he said it, they all had like those subtle, silent, you know, reactions. Miss hmm. Peacock got a subtle, or a very, very subtle, very visceral reaction. And when he sat back down, Christopher Lloyd yeah. immediately got back up. 
He was sitting oh. next to him. Yeah. But they actually used it for like pretty funny jokes later. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who, the... who, who will go upstairs with me? And he's like, ah, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good. And just and, building up to, I'm going to go home and have sex with my wife. So, <laughs> yeah. Nick's favorite line. So, that, that so... was the one I did not really get as a kid. <laughs> oh. I didn't get, like, why is that funny? Oh, that was your opening, I think, for Jingle All the Way. Oh. That was the line that Brett cut into the opening, and I totally thought that was a riff on uh, Phil Hartman. Oh, I could and see I that. didn't, I didn't realize until the end of this movie. I was like, "That's where that that's line that is was. from." Yep. <laughs> is, uh-huh. Do you say lines from like all of the films we watch? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, half of the things Nick says are just lines, like Bumblebee from Transformers. Yeah. You just have like a little radio dial. Nick, that would have been a great time to just any movie quote out of context to oh. answer this question. How do you know I didn't? Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Watch some movies, you uncultured swine. <laughs> but Patrick, you're you're hitting on a point that I think, you know, we've kind of talked about with other movies is that I would bet that when you watch this as a child, you didn't know that they had set him up as homosexual because so often we see these movies on TV and we don't see the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, and it was funny, as I said, it, it took me a while as a kid. I didn't know what era it was. And then it's right there in the beginning. It says. Yeah. That was another thing. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. How do I know? I know it was the 50s. How do I remember? And I think it was, well, because they talk about J. Edgar Hoover. Mm-hmm. But then I did a quick Wikipedia search and found that J. Edgar Hoover was in office a long ass time. Mm-hmm. So that even doesn't <laughs> narrow it down. Wasn't the he too. the one that they invented terms for? Like they set terms for presidency for him? Head of FBI, not president. Who am I thinking? Uh, okay. No, it was, <laughs> wasn't it one of the Roosevelt's? FDR, maybe, maybe. Franklin. It was one of the Roosevelt's because there's I have a a Calypso playlist and one of the songs is literally a campaign song about the third term. Wow. So I guess it would have been FDR because that was to get us through the war, Mm -hmm. basically. Right. And I think so. But but he didn't. Man, we are (laughs) failing. We are clueless. Welcome to Uh, our new segment. We're going to get some angry tweets from. (laughs) Is that the follow up movie for this episode is Clueless? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep as Daisy if, chaining Brett. it. <laughs> Did you guys know that uh, one more thing? I, as much as we were gushing over Tim Curry, he was like the third choice. What? For that role. What? what? Yeah, that Who was one else? Of uh, Rowan Atkinson. Oh, oh wow. Mr. Mr. Bean. Bean. That would be pretty great. Oh. And then, oh, I saw one. I didn't good. recognize the person at all. And then I saw one that was said uh, John Cleese was briefly considered. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I would, yeah, yeah. Like a faulty towers sort of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. I could see that one. I don't know about Rowan Atkinson. Oh, really? Rowan Atkinson would be great. Oh, he would have been. Fantastic. He would be. He would be great. But it would have been like he, he's so far over the top for this movie. Yeah. Yeah, but that ending sequence that like Tim Curry did, oh, that I can been great. totally yeah. see Rowan yeah. Atkinson doing. I that. I mean, clearly Tim Curry is probably the best choice, but Rowan Atkinson, that seems very cool. But Atkinson. like falling out of the cabinet in the kitchen thing, and like yeah. just keep going on with yeah. I I couldn't stop thinking of Christopher Plummer as <laughs> Professor Plum. <laughs> <laughs> right, I could see John Cleese as Colonel Mustard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. I was just thinking, like, if they remade this today, oh. who who would be the cast? Rashida Jones would be <gasps> yes. Miss White. Yes. Oh, yes, nice. I love just it. Put Rashida Jones and everything. Actually, I know. Frankly, <laughs> just put the cast of Parks and Recreation. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're set. Problem solved. As, as the butler. I mean, come on. Like, Nick Offerman as, oh, as Colonel Mustard yes. is yep. kind yep. of perfect. So good. So yeah. is Ben Christopher Lloyd's character? Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. This is perfect. Well, Leslie Nope is Peacock. He's Aziz Azaris, is Tim Curry. Is, is he Ansari? Ansari. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, okay, it's Elsa Zima. <laughs> I kind of love this idea. I, I want to see, like, the uh, the motorist that shows up, and it's Jeremy Jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My car broke down. Let me in the house. Nope. 
Yeah. Oh, and the, and the guy who's like always accident prone is totally Jerry. Sorry, I'm accident prone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Mr. I Green, mean, yeah. It's like the Simpsons Halloween specials, but the Parks and Recreation Clue special. Yeah. And Amy Poehler is totally God. Mrs. Peacock, right? Like, yeah, it would be sure. so good. I want to yeah. see this now. Uh, You're welcome. Just Who's put them the in everything. other girl? Aubrey Plaza? Aubrey Plaza is the singing telegram girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Donna is definitely our Miss Scarlet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. God, this is so good. This is great. All right. <laughs> All right. Somebody tweet. At least uh, some fan art. Somebody. Somebody. Yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> the end. Say, well, you know what's funny? I, what's funny is I feel like I like different things now. Like the wordplay I mentioned stood out to me a lot more, and I really appreciate that at the beginning. I didn't like all the endings as much at the end this time. I mean, they're all fine in their own right, and Tim Curry running around is great. But part of me thinks it would have been almost a better movie. It's just one the ending when everyone does it, and then you have yeah. the whole sequence. Uh, it's, it's it's so much fun when you you like do the DVD and you just get one randomly. Like it's it's just a lot more fun in my opinion. Every time I pop in the disc, I want to do that, but then I don't because I think, well, there's a two thirds chance I don't get flames. On the side of my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. But so that should just be the ending, though, because that's the but, same yeah. one where they all did it. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the thing. The is there's, one. there's only one good ending. <laughs> yeah. Because no, the, the Scarlet was okay. Well, the only reason they're good, though, is because of Tim Curry's lead up. The actual yeah. final totally. reveals. The reveals yeah. of Scarlet is eh. The reveal of Peacock, I thought, was did not that good at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last thing one is the best. So. And it almost. This time, I feel like I liked that a lot as a kid because it was lots of stuff's going around. And Tim Curry, what a wacky dude. He's running around. But <laughs> I, I, nudging it now, my favorite parts were almost the first half, the subtle mm-hmm. stuff. And then it would have been, I know it's tighter mm-hmm. if you just have that ending. And I like it too because it right. makes the most sense. Like yeah. uh, Colonel Mustard does leave uh, Scarlet. And at one point, which makes it very suspicious, like the other lady does comment on the soup mm-hmm. and the other girl does like know the what is she called? What do you call that? Monkey's maid. maid. Other maid. <laughs> well, that that I Sexy think lady. is I a yeah. testament to the brilliance of the plotting in this movie that every one of the three endings has seeds planted earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I especially love communism was just a red herring. It's in a every very, ending. Exactly. It's a funny line on its own. So if you only see one len- one ending, it's a great line. But if you see all three en- endings, it's a great running gag. And did you notice that it's said by a different person each time? Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Each, each ending, it's said by a different person. Yeah. But I love that. The, f- the final ending, if you watch all three together, like you're saying, Patrick, because it, it does like tie up all those loose ends like i get what yeah. you're saying but i like that it's like oh yeah all those things happen yeah i agree if you had to have one because then you get madeline khan with the flames you get i'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife <laughs> you get all the best stuff so you know there is a question though too though not to be nitpicky i have a question is if if the the, the last ending was the real ending and it was all an elaborate plot by Mr. Body, the real Mr. Body is Tim Curry to get rid of his accomplices. Accompli- I can't, man, it's after midnight where I'm at. Uh, accomplices. Um, that's a that's a very shaky plan. That 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 hinges on a lot of unpredictable mm. things going his way. But uh, also, does that mean that Michael McKean, Mr. Green, has been posing as? A State yeah, Department employee who is gay to lure out Mr. Body to hopefully. So is he is he uh, a, a straight married guy who has been deep under posing as homosexual that long, just hoping yeah. <laughs> that yeah he gets contacted well, by the same guy who's blackmailing why, him. Why don't you check out some actual Agatha Christie? Because <laughs> there, there's some quote unquote legitimate mystery stories that are pretty preposterous. Ouch. Well, I think the most preposterous thing about this movie is that the FBI was outside the whole time and they let <laughs> six people die. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. I mean, were they there the whole time or did they just show up when the, the creepy Christian head of FBI? They were there the, the whole time. It depends on they what had it ended, right? sting. I Because so- there's the guy who was like pretending to be the Jesus dude who actually ends up being the head of. Yeah. I think that was his signal to Mr. Green that they've arrived. Mm. And oh, actually, yeah, if you watch that scene again, like he comes in and he's like doing his 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 missionary thing. And Mr. Green kind of takes off his glasses and nods at him and takes a few steps back. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh. So, N- so maybe they weren't outside the whole time. That's just saying, hey, Green, we're here. Mm-hmm. It, now, that works in the real ending, not in the Miss Peacock ending because they no. have fucking floodlights ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but one thing that kind of bothered me was in the scene where the maid dies, I swear I heard a male voice talking to her. I was thinking about that I because I, they had to really walk a line, not that they were that serious about it, but it had mm-hmm. to be a voice that passed as male and female and could have been any of them. And I felt like, oh, it kind of sounds male. Oh, no, it kind of sounds female. Like it kind of. Mm-hmm. It's just a but, testament to Madeline Kahn's acting prowess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you think that's who the voice actually was? Oh, I'd believe it though. Yeah. I'm also curious to go back to the scene where she first screams and they all run in the room because Tim Curry makes the point one of you weren't there. Yeah. But I swear I remember taking note and I was like, okay, they're all there. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if they're just like hoping that you don't. You just can't remember? Yeah, I mean... Or was that in the scene where Tim Curry was trying to deceive everyone? Also, mm-hmm. a serious mystery story has to pay that stuff off. I don't right. call the, this movie to that. Yeah. And it still would be interesting to check it out. Yeah, a movie called Clue, where they provide a ton of clues, and it could still lead to three different endings, did not do enough work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that's kind of my problem with Agatha Christie. Like, her stories are just like, just this dump truck full of clues that point at every character. And then at some point, she just spins the wheel and picks one. It's <laughs> wow, just, yeah. really? Just throwing yeah, shade? Coming on out against Agatha, Agatha Christie here. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mysteries are hard, though. Sure. I'll say, I'll have defense. They're, that's difficult. I think I said it when I was on for Ace Ventura because I've had a very mini. One is part of my plot in the book I'm working mm. on. And that's hard to have a clue that yeah. makes sense and it doesn't feel forced, but it's not too – you want it to be kind of that – you you're you ha- walking a line. It, that That's tough. That's, yeah. 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 You have yeah. to be like – you have to be ultra empathetic to like how your audience is going to react to what you're writing. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be really in tune with how they're t- going to take it. How many clues they're going to pick up on. Yeah. Or, or even if it's not a clue clue or it's the, the person who's trying to solve the mystery, if whatever their logical progression, that it makes sense. I think, uh, like South Park had a gag years ago about that, where it's just people just, a guy would just say random words and stumble on to (laughs) the right one. And, but, uh, I want to talk about the real issue guys. Have you ever seen something more disgusting food wise on a movie? (laughs) <laughs> than that white shit that they were eating. Like because I mean, it was monkey brains or just like the vis No, uh the like the appearance the pres- of the food. Yeah, the appearance. Yeah. There. And I'm not a squeeze. That just looked I'd rather eat a live snake from Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, I feel like, than that <laughs> shit. I was trying to figure out if it was like like alfredo sauce or something or gravy all over it yeah what was it really what was it really though because some of them had to eat it they ate mouthfuls of that stuff they put it raw in their face holes yeah probably Uh, gravy i don't know it was the mid 50s brett did find a super disgusting recipe from that era (laughs) was that the salad the donut piece yeah the donut salad Donut, the donut salad, and salad. donut yeah. salad filled with uh, what was it? A prune cottage. and cottage cheese. Yeah, cottage yeah. cheese uh, and prune served with mayo gross. on a bed yeah. of lettuce. On a yeah, <laughs> on a single piece of lettuce. <laughs> uh, was it something but, like? Did you tweet that, Brett? It was like your yeah, meat, yeah, that your, was a, your meat we, eater will come running or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could remember what it was exactly, but Luna had this cookbook that her grandmother had. So this is like from 
I don't know, the 40s or the 50s in Italy. Mm-hmm. And it was like making this heavy point about how the the Jewish people would cook eggplant when nobody would ever dare cook eggplant. The Jewish people would. It was what? like it was like horrifying. This, and it was just a cookbook. A racist cookbook? Wow. Yeah. What's racist, wrong with eggplant? Italian racist cookbook. I, I don't know. Ask Italian people in the 40s. I don't know. We, we I mean, was it details. code for dick back that was then, a, too? That was or? an Axis cookbook you had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what's happening here? Why is it? Yeah. But it was like, it was supportive. It was like saying, like, you know, as insane as they are, the Jewish people have come up with something <laughs> with. Oh, my you know, God. It, it was. That is the was most backhanded helping. compliment. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Meh. So let's get some uh, final thoughts on this whole thing. <laughs> So uh, since since the podcast is singing over there, Ash, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was great. I um, I really enjoyed it. There's definitely like I can understand why my memory of this movie was just people standing around talking in a house because it's pretty much the whole film. But it is witty banter. Um, but I I agree with Patrick. I I like uh, I like watching it and getting a random ending but i like the last ending best or ending c as it's called but uh but yeah i still really enjoyed it i love tim curry i i think it would be really fun to see a modern well i guess you know it's so funny is because i feel like game night in this movie have so many similarities Oh, oh for sure yeah yeah i guess that is the modern day version yeah strong strongly recommend that maybe and strongly recommend the cast of Parks and Rec together. <laughs> and remaking <laughs> that movie. <laughs> so, Brett, I think you were also in the beginning talking about the uh, the standing and talking and the slow start. How did that feel this time around? Yeah. Um, it, the, the slow start was much shorter than I thought. Um, I, I chuckled all the way through their 10-minute poop joke, and I... <laughs> Uh, uh, simultaneously felt like it didn't need to be 10 minutes but as soon as everyone was in the building shit took off and it was great literally but, uh, yeah, shit no, took off shit yeah took off. <laughs> no it was it was really good and i'm surprised at how much both of us were laughing um yeah it, just so many great lines and uh like I made the comment, you know, aside from the uh, everybody staring down was her faces, boobs, boobs or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Like most of the jokes in the movie were pretty clean jokes, like Mm -hmm. which is not what you see nowadays. It's usually like gross shock humor. And it was, you know, we were laughing the whole time. It's great to see something like this. And I kind of wish there was more stuff in in this kind of comedy category that it, you know it was what sam said it was super dry humor uh but like yeah i don't know i, I miss i miss this kind of vibe in a movie well keep in mind it had to be acceptable to an audience who enjoyed a board game so i think it's intentionally that sort of comedy where like there are jokes that kids won't understand and it's fine and it won't hurt them but then there's plenty of stuff they will enjoy. Yeah. Like, I don't think I, I didn't realize that what's her name had a brothel Scarlet or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, until this viewing, I was like, oh, oh, okay. And I didn't even, they, they go through it so fast. It was hard for me to pick up on like what everybody was being blackmailed for specifically. Yeah. Um, so I think if children, it can kind of just go over their head and they can be like, what? Yeah. But it's one of those, like, uh, the overall narrative, they, they have the line in there where it's like, oh, everyone's working for the government and being blackmailed. And everyone goes, yes. And like, so it's, there's stuff like that where I remember that as a kid, which is like, oh, the government's always up to shady shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Brett, if you want comedy that is, uh, acceptable to children, but still intelligent and witty for adults, then I refer to the Muppets. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. this is true. Yeah. Th- that's another thing that falls into that category. But it's like it's a narrow category. Like yeah. I, there's not a lot of uh, 
classic examples. Like, or maybe like there's a lot of attempts. Shrek is a good one too. Like there's some jokes in that film that only parents would enjoy versus children. Or you know, Mr. Bean. Since oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Bean. Yeah, I, I would House venture. A movie that I think it's mentioned every time I've been guested on here, <laughs> Princess Bride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally. Liked yeah. that as a kid, enjoy it on a whole new level as an adult. Yeah. Or uh, For Men me, in that, Tights, too, with the chat. That's what belt. I was just going to say. Yeah. That's That was my movie of that. Like, as a kid, it's like a funny fantasy story. And then mm-hmm. you grow up and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. This is very clever banter. <laughs> uh-huh. So what did you think, Sam? I loved it. It was super fun and really clever. And I think what surprised me the most is how well they balanced all of the characters and introducing each character, but kind of fitting in little comedy bits into each character's introduction. Mm -hmm. Like the super jumpy guy at the beginning kept spilling his drinks on everybody. Mm -hmm. Like it just (laughs) cracked me up. I had to stop her from screaming. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Tim Curry's impressions of everyone. Oh, so good. (laughs) I also like the first time we meet Scarlett and her car is like broken down on the side of the road and she sees another car coming and she like does the little leg pop and like leans over uh-huh. the hood. <laughs> yeah. I cannot hear somebody say, um, oh God, what what what's the line? Uh mostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the uh <laughs> to, to to make the story short and they say too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> yeah. I can't oh, I yeah. always hear that in my head when somebody says now the line that I can't even remember. To make a long yeah. story short? Yeah. Make a long story short. <laughs> well, and then I always hear too late. Yeah. So, Sam, were you, uh, do you say all you wanted to say? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I feel like I've said it all. Tim Curry's amazing. Uh, just really great character acting throughout the whole thing. And that really carries it. Because like Ash said, there's not a ton of plot and it's a relatively short movie um Mm -hmm. but i enjoyed the whole thing and i would sit down and watch it again right now if you asked me to you know what this movie makes me want to watch and i know you're gonna say no nick Uh oh it it really makes me want to watch rocky horror picture show (laughs) it's because the susan sarandon and the creepy mansion i I never want to hear the time warp again you don't yeah, want to I mean, do it again? Never. No. Like but, always, you you are allowed to watch movies, but I'm not going to watch that one with you. But it's it's just a jump to the right. No. <laughs> so Patrick, let's get uh, let's get the last word on it from you. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It's nice to know that uh, younger me didn't have completely terrible taste in movies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it definitely was. Uh, it's been. Easily over a decade. Really enjoyed that. Always appreciate. Uh, I like Sam said. I think I might watch it again in the near future, though, just because there was a lot of. I love that stuff. The wordplay. It's something. Um, my writing comes across sometimes is very blunt, but also <laughs> at the same time I try to have things here or there and there. You know, I, I really appreciate that and enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. It was very last minute. Yeah, it worked out really well. Like I said, I was ready to podcast anyway tonight so (laughs) well it's it's actually pretty cool that you're here now um you know i i travel a lot and when i Mm -hmm. travel i just carry the kindle um so when i'm reading i'm reading off the kindle yeah you gave me a copy of space trippin which i haven't touched because it was a physical copy and i've been traveling so much but now that i've been here with my feet on the ground for a while i'm currently seven or eight chapters in oh and and it's and cool. it's terrible. It's, here, there's something I I was I was really into in the book. There's something you got to do with science fiction, in my opinion. You have to you have to plant rules and you have to have specific rules and you have to come up with original ideas. And I'm still early in the book, but the idea of how they travel, the the idea of mm-hmm. um, you don't use the word r- wormhole. Uh, uh, I make a joke about that. 
but yeah. Okay, uh, but that's not the official word for it, the anomalies. Yeah. Anomaly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this idea that you hit an anomaly and it's basically a wormhole, you come out in a different point in space, but you have to do the math perfectly or you're not going to come out where you want to be. And if you hit it wrong, you come out in the wrong place. If you hit an anomaly that hasn't been charted and they haven't done the math on yet, you come out in a weird place. And I love like like core, cool sci-fi concepts like that. And it's wrapped around just funny characters. So Thank you. I'm, I'm into it. It's I mean seven or eight chapters in, but I'm I'm in, man. Thank you. So if people have not checked out Space Trippin', that's the book Space Trippin' by Patrick Edwards. Yeah. It's a good book. Yeah. Thank you. That's so much. that's the one that's out, but you're working on others. You got some others coming. Yeah, if I could yeah, I got I'm working on the second one. I've got two other cool things going on. Uh, I just I have a short story. Oh, well, that's all the time we have. All right. Bye. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if, we're, if we're doing that, yeah. No, no, uh, go for it. I just wrote a <laughs> just short story that's going to come out in an anthology. I don't know the exact timeline on that, but, um, oh, you, cool. you know, follow me on Twitter, uh, at the Pat Edwards on Twitter. Um, I'll be posting on that. It's a bunch of authors. I know we're getting together. The, the theme is escape. And Ooh. I'll go ahead and tell you, mm-hmm. mine is about, uh, I assume, you know, most people are, who are sci-fi fans are familiar with the, uh, parallel dimensions thing. You know, there's a million mm-hmm. or infinite versions of earth and infinite versions of each other. Uh, three versions of the same guy stuck in a really shitty version of earth. Oh, so, then, so this one, yes, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are I've the heard that so 2018. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. so it's, it's shitty in the sense of just really annoying, <laughs> not apocalyptic shitty oh, okay. that we're okay. currently right. in not but, like the road uh, shitty uh, no but just <laughs> just aggravating to the point where you'd rather be in an apocalyptic world and they have to uh escape also Wait, the shitty are you version writing of the good place because you just <laughs> basically <laughs> that, said the plot of the good place <laughs> that show is phenomenal I love that. but uh, yes yeah, three versions of the same guy uh that and then actually another short story i wrote that takes place in the space tripping universe is not to plug another podcast on your podcast but there's a podcast called uh How chronosphere <laughs> i should make sure i get the name right <laughs> but uh it's a uh, chronosphere fiction they basically they just do stories like they take you know short stories and turn them into audio podcasts and uh, they, one of my short stories is going to come out in September on their podcast as oh, an audio very cool. play. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's, yeah. Podcast is like the cool new place for, for storytelling, mm-hmm. which is like I, I wasn't fully yeah. expecting a, a couple years ago. And it's just like, wow, I enjoy this more than TV. Mm-hmm. They do good stuff. I, I hadn't, they had reached out to me and said, if you have a story that I have a couple I never did anything with. So I submitted it. They got a funny one I'm listening to. It's like a sword and sorcery one, but it's about like a big warrior who's cursed and he can't sit on any furniture. Like <laughs> if you try, he like be any beds, chairs, anything like that. But, uh, no, yeah. But, and also if you're listening to this, keep listening. Cause it's a good show. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Well, th- thanks a lot for joining us, Patrick. I know it was last minute, but I think we had a pretty good time. I did. I didn't. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and if you uh, like this show, this is part of the Laugh Stash TV network of content. It's this podcast and a YouTube channel. Where we've got a cooking show, a drinking show, video game parodies, and a lot of other fun stuff. Yeah. In fact, we just released our latest sketch video uh, called Cop Pockets. It's pretty great. Go it's check hilarious. it out. Thank you. It uh, it just recently hit over 5,000 views. Woo! So uh, definitely check it out. It's only like, I think it's a minute and a half long, guys. So it doesn't take much of your time to watch it. Just watch it over and over and make sure you don't skip the ads so I make all the money. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So you can follow us there. Uh, we're Laugh TV on YouTube. We're also on Twitter at Laugh TV. Or you can follow this podcast specifically at Let's Rewatch on Twitter. Sorry, my brain just died. It just stopped. Flames on the side of my face. But um, I also haven't mentioned in a while that are uh we have a facebook group i think you mention it every episode but that's cool yeah but it's been two weeks so it's been a while (laughs) 
All right, whatever. I was going to shout out the fact that we have a new member, but that's fine. I just won't. Anyway, moving on. (laughs) No, shout out our new member. Well, I I can't see his name because my phone died, but we have a new member. Welcome. Thank you for joining. (laughs) I can't remember their name either. So if you liked our podcast, please share it with your friends and get us some more listeners. We'd love to grow our audience. And make sure your feeds are up to date and you let people know we'll be doing this again in another two weeks for another episode of Let's Rewatch. Next time, we're going to watch The Day My Butt Went Psycho. Oh, The Day My Butt Went Psycho is like a kid's book, right? I I don't, I think it's not a kid's movie. I I recognize it. Why? I don't know. Do you, can you fuck up your Google search? The Day My Butt Went Psycho. (laughs) It is a kid's thing. You're right. Thank you.